All right, it's time for the video. It's time for the build guide. So just to preface everything off, I mean, let's just rattle everything off. This is my favorite League Starter that I've ever played and I've ever made for myself. It's really, really fun to play. This is version three or four of it at this point. I have played it for quite a while. I've been refining it, taking all of the feedback, making it better every single league. Ben played this build a couple of leagues ago. I even referenced his uh, version of the build. So there's some improvements there as well. So we got the uh, build master number one that's already helped me out. I've worked with people like Havoc as well, getting feedback from them to kind of tune the, uh, the league start setup uh, for the leveling guide. So that is better than before. I've made a couple of changes to this build. It did just overall get buffed, just like slightly, but it did overall get buffed this league. We can now use call to arm support for Enduring Cry and Infernal Cry, very, very comfortable. And we also did technically get more damage on Frostblink, but I haven't really figured out exactly how I want to scale that yet. So we're still doing the old scaling instead of doing flat damage. What I'm going to show you right here is a moderately rolled up tier 16 Baron map on a five link with my lightning coil. It's got very, very conservative gear. As you can see, lightning coils got trash implicits, um, you know, trash stuff right here. <laughs> Actually, I still have the wrong, uh, the wrong weapon on. Let's give you the full trash, full trash. This is a slightly better weapon. I will give you guys the, uh, the full trash weapon right here. This is full trash gear on a five link. I have some under leveled support gems right here, just so you can see low level gems do recommend, you know, your primary gems getting level 21, but yeah, just to set the tone, you know, very, very achievable league start gear right here. It's a very comfortable. It's a very fast build. If you've never played it before, if you're interested in ignite elementalist, uh, it is a very strong archetype. If you want the giga Chad one detonate dead, it's over there. Uh, if you want like the hardcore, uh, giga Chad, you want to get to Ubers right away. You can do that. But if you want something that's like faster, smoother, more fun, in my opinion, but still scales with the same archetype, still just a strong Ignite Elementalist, you know, consider giving this one a shot. In terms of the play style, we will be casting our Malevolence Divine Blessing. Um, Infernal Cry will be automated next league, so we don't have to press that. Button haters, <laughs> uh, I have addressed that. We are now using a Profane Proxy Flammability. This also gives our Eye of Malice more uptime. Um, negative res goes more negative. That's how it works. Just so uh, for people that are going to ask about the Eye of Malice. More negative, more negative is the way it goes. With exposure, we have uh, more negative res from the flammability right here. Not to mention that it gives us a nice uptime actually on this mastery. So we have some really good uh, crit mitigation as well. On a five link right here, and let's just show it going. So we are going to be periodically doing our Malevolence Divine Blessing, and we are going to be frost blinking into packs of monsters. And yeah, um, other thing is I have addressed the, uh, the defensive concerns primarily that people had. The very, very first version of this build didn't have a lightning coil. It was kind of at the beginning of the um, the, the lightning coil fizz taken as meta. Lightning coil, coil Cloak of Flame, Corel Helmet Craft, etc. Gravisius Body Armor Craft. The idea is that Frostblink has a very high base damage for uh, based on its gem levels. This is even better now next patch because we can scale uh, additional flat added damage as well. And then we're using Cold of Fire support right here to convert some of that Cold of Fire damage. And then all that combined with Shaper of Flames, all damage can ignite, even our cold damage. As long as we're doing more fire than cold, then we get that 25% more as well. So you just want to double check that your fire damage is higher than your cold. You can see that we have that here. So we get an additional 25% more damage. Really, really good. In terms of mechanics, the way that Frostblink works is it gets more cooldown recovery rate per enemy in the area, both at the source area and the target area. So that default 2.6 second cooldown right here, Really uncomfortable. That sucks. How do you use that as a primary skill? You want to blink into a pack of monsters. So yeah, hey, people were saying melee was dead. We got melee right here. <laughs> and you can see the cooldown is very, very fast as long as you're blinking into or out of a pack of monsters. And so that's the key. Like the one mechanical downside here is you have to pay attention to your cooldown. You know, primarily lean on your shield charge for getting around. And then your frost blink is your damage skill. And that's it. Really, really good. Clear, really, really good, um, you know, consistent damage right there. Uh, okay, well, this is unfortunately a graveyard, so <laughs> enjoy playing my favorite boss in the game. So actually, this is a really good demonstration, is you do want to be periodically throwing some fire traps. You do have uh, combustion right now on your frost blink, so you still want to be frost blinking on the enemies. And your fire trap will work by both igniting and putting burning ground on the ground. It will also get a very big ignite, uh, like 400 flat added damage if you ignite them um, that they're already burning. So you want to burn them first. You want to throw a couple fire traps or frost blink first and then throw your fire trap. And then that's how you're going to get your uh, your more damage there. So let's kill this guy. Just kind of tank everything.
We can even do the worst map boss in the game. Is this the worst map boss in the game? It's up there. <laughs> it's definitely up there. And again, right, I'm on a five link. I'm on really trash gear. Like, this is, you know, this is a, <laughs> a campaign scepter, right? And yeah, we can do a Baron as well. Uh, we also do have Scorch Ground from our uh, boots. So you do want to keep the Scorch Ground on the enemy. Nice thing is we do have 100% spell suppression. So that's really good. Also, because we're Eldritch Battery, we don't have to worry too much about uh, standing on these little mana packs right here. So you can kill the, uh, the Conquerors with a Map Scepter. And your damage goes up. Let's try to tank this. All right, we can tank that as well. Your damage goes up significantly. Put Fire Trap in your body armor. You go to a true six link. And if you uh, have a scepter, that's not from like act four, basically. <laughs> um, but yeah, I think I, I want to show you guys like the most conservative setup, what you can expect. This setup particularly is much more defensively oriented. The idea is very nice, clean, clear. It can boss. Um, again, six link your Fire Trap if you really care about bossing. It scales to much better damage if you put in a much better weapon. But I want to set this up in a way that you're going to feel very comfortable playing it instead of, you know, something that is just kind of showing off a lot of damage. That is my spiel, just trying to show off the build. Hopefully it advertises it to you in a way that was realistic and, uh, you know, maybe had you a little bit excited to play it. I love the play style. It's really fun. It's very safe, you know, again, very defensively oriented. And it can scale damage uh, very, very well if you want to. Like the original version of the build with like dual wielding, plus one, plus one scepters. You can hit the dot cap with this if you want to. There's a lot of resources that I have from the previous versions of this build that I've played. So we have a 30 page document showing how to level through the campaign, three and a half hour uh, act 10 campaign run by Havoc. So if you want to see the best in the business do it, we have that video for you as well. And the previous videos also talk through every little mechanic in extreme detail. So what I just want to show you right now is the patch notes effectively in the POB, the changes that I've made from the previous version and how I've adapted a little bit. Hopefully that looks okay. Everything's a little misaligned, but we'll make do. So this is the new version of the build. I don't know, version three or four at this point. Um, I've integrated some of the changes actually from when Ben played it the first time. He had some really good ideas, surprise, surprise, that I uh, I really like. So we integrated some of his stuff in here. Like I said in the, uh, in the showcase, this is a very defensively oriented setup. So with incredibly conservative gear right here. So you can see it's a three stat scepter with a crafted damage on it. And nothing else that I have here is, <laughs> is anything special. All very, very conservative gear. I actually don't even have spell suppression on my gloves. We have a plus one fire amulet. This might be the best item that I have. Everything else here, one essence of anger ring. That's it with my flask off, with my molten shell off. I have a 14.5K Fizz Max hit, 45K EHP, and we're at 3.4 million DPS without our Cluster Jewels. If we do go to the Cluster Jewel setup, we hit about 4 million DPS. So this is the Passive Tree setup that I am recommending right now. When you're like level 70 and 80, you'll notice that I'm still recommending the old setup. The density of value here is really high. We just get really solid increased damage. We get really solid increased life, a little bit of spell suppression. This is just the easiest path to go once we're down at Growth and Decay and Leafy Shade. We also get a very early Lucky Spell Suppression. So that's why I recommend doing this early. However, once we have more points that we can play with and you get a couple Regret Orbs, you know, get like 15 Regrets or so, then I do recommend going into this setup. Unspecking out of these points, going around the outside. This will let us grab Inveterate as well as the Spell Suppression Mastery. This will allow us to hit 100% natural Spell Suppression without Lucky. And that's even without going into spell suppression on some of our gear. So this is very, very comfortable. We also go into reflexes here, and this is how we really cap it out. So we get a nice chunk of increased evasion as well as spell suppression. The other advantage here is we get really good mana reservation efficiency. Charisma is just straight up better than influence in terms of reserving our auras. And then we also get overcharged, which with that whole cluster, we get 12% chance to get frenzy, power, and endurance charges. This is really, really good, particularly for keeping our crit chance up for Ellie Overload. So this is actually with power charges. We have a base 6% crit chance, goes to 15 with power charges, and then actually with crit on one flask, this will go to 18%. So as long as we're hitting, you know, about five times every eight seconds, we're going to be on average having a really good elemental overload uptime. This was a thing that uh, that Ben liked, and I, I really like it as well. We're gonna have endurance charges at a very high percentage uptime, which is gonna feel great. 
this can even allow you to run Immortal Call, which you'll notice I actually have Immortal Call in my, uh, my showcase setup. And you can choose personally whether you prefer Molten Shell or Immortal Call. They're both valid in this build. You know, you'll notice that our armor is on the lower side. So Molten Shell is not really huge. It's not bad when you have flasks up. So, you know, okay Molten Shells, but I really like Immortal Cry actually. And I'm going to be leaning towards that, I think personally. And then the other notable change that you'll see is during the leveling, I do recommend going into the dual wielding mastering here with Dark Arts. That was a total miss that I didn't have in previous versions. This is speedrunning tech, basically, but it's also just really, really comfortable for uh, leveling through the axe. The speedrunners will usually go over the top, but because we're going into Ignite, the bottom is a little bit better for us. We save one passive point. Not only do we get some attack and cast speed, we also get some block. And then with this mastery, as long as we have two different weapon types, you can get uh, a 60% increased damage boost. We get this at level 36. That feels really, really good. So that's the one big change there in the leveling tree, but everything else is the same. You can walk you through right here. Not really any notable changes besides that. And then, like I said before, when you're in like the 80s or so, you're going to be doing this for really high density. Then when you get into the 90s here, you'll want to spec into this, start grabbing the spell suppression, the life here, higher value notables as soon as you can afford those uh, travel points. Not to mention the really nice thing about this is it solves our dexterity. And that way we can really focus on getting our strength up. This is kind of an uncomfortable thing is strength is uh, a bit of a pickle here with uh, trying to use a high level shield charge and determination. So you're gonna be looking for that a lot on your belt and your amulet. All right, I'm not gonna yap anymore. I don't need to draw this out any further. All of the previous resources and all that will be linked below. If you really want to delve deep into this build, understand it from beginning to end, you know, A of all, you can just join me in chat, ask some questions. There will be a max roll guide that will be linked below as well as soon as it's done. I got to work on it the second this video is out. <laughs> That's the next step. Uh, the Maxwell Guide, probably late tonight, early tomorrow is the goal. That's all I'm going to be doing the rest of the day today. That will have a lot more detail, full progression and all that. But today, I just wanted to present to you primarily the POB, a little bit of a showcase showing you guys what you can expect if you play this build. If you've never played it before, I highly recommend it. I think it's a really fun build. And if you have played it before, I do firmly believe this is the best version that has ever been. It's only gotten better and, uh, you know, I'm getting better as well, understanding the strengths and weaknesses and kind of uh, building around that. So this has been fun. I love revisiting a build and just kind of optimizing it. I'm really excited for next league. I hope you join me on stream and I see you guys there. Thank you for everything. Appreciate you guys and I'll see you all soon. Goodbye.